What's up guys, welcome to the MD journey. My name is Laksh. I'm a third year medical student and actually a part-time medical school blogger. So I've actually been blogging for the last year and a half about how to succeed in med school, how to manage your time. And originally it was just a hobby. It was just something I would put out for my friends, my family. But a year and a half later, tens of thousands of people are finding the blog. And so I'm really excited about the progress, but I know that there's students that just don't wanna read a thousand word post. Totally understandable. So that's where these YouTube videos come in. It's my way to just get the material out to you in video, text, whatever form that you enjoy. Full disclosure, this is my first blog post and my second time trying it. I recorded this yesterday and I just hated the energy. And if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to study in medical school. That's the most common question that we all have when we start medical school. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to study, how to do it efficiently, and how to kind of focus on long-term retention from day one. But before we start the video, I've always wanted to say this, hit that intro. So hopefully you enjoy that intro as much as I did making it, but let's get to the video. So how do you study in medical school? The good news is that there's no one right way to do it, but there's plenty of wrong ways. And what I mean is that there's active ways and there's passive ways. And you can probably guess which way most medical students start. They all start using passive techniques. Passive techniques are rereading the text, highlighting, and just kind of writing annotations in the margin, hoping that you'll get back to it later. So how do you use active methods? And that's kind of the whole point. I'm gonna go over the most common techniques and strategies that students use, but then make it active from the very start. So let's get to it. Tip number one, using your syllabus. So every student loves using the syllabus because it's made by the lecturer who's likely gonna make the test questions. How do you get away from the rereading, the skimming, and the highlighting that we all kind of have a tendency of doing? So this is what I like to do. I don't actually have my syllabi from my first couple of years. I threw those away as fast as I could. Bye, Felicia. But we're just gonna pretend using my first aid for step two, because this is what I'm studying for currently. And I'm just gonna act like this is my syllabus. So let me find a chapter that doesn't have any gross pictures. We'll use this page, it's pretty safe. It just has some bones on them. So act like this is my syllabus. What I like to do is I like to look for the big ideas. And I read through paragraph to paragraph and I try to identify what is this trying to teach me? What's the main idea? So let's act like this was a paragraph about hypertension. And maybe these three paragraphs were talking about, you know, what's the risk factors for hypertension? So what I do is I would write that into the margin and I would write that in a form of a question. What's the risk factor for hypertension? And I would skim through the whole text and identify the major topics and write down the major question. Once you finish your skim, you're ready to go to class. When you go to class, you're trying to listen to your lecture for these major ideas that you wrote on the side. Once you hear them talking about these ideas, you're going to listen for their evidence. What's the answer to these questions? And you can underline them, you can highlight them. This is basically helping you parse through the whole paragraph and just identify what's important. Do that throughout the whole lecture. Add in any other big ideas the lecturer may mention. When you go home to review, go through your major ideas and try to answer them before you even look at the paragraph. If you can answer them pretty decently, move on. You're doing great. If you find a big idea, however, that you just don't know the answer to, that's going to indicate that you need to come back to it. Go ahead and start and keep going through the rest of the lecture. Now that you have a collection of stars, go ahead and go through each big idea and look through the paragraph and find the evidence. Again, you can underline, you can highlight the proof. Once you've gone through all the ideas that you struggle with, come back and try to go through the whole syllabus chapter and answer every single question that you have in the margin. Once you can do that, you can truly say that you mastered that chapter. When it comes time to study for your quizzes and your test, all you have to do is go through your syllabus and see if you can answer these big ideas. If you can still remember the answer, even after it's been two weeks since you've studied that lecture, you don't need to learn it again. But if you find a topic that you struggle with, then just look at the paragraph and find the highlights and the underlines that answer that question, and then come back to it later. So that's how I like to use my syllabus to study in medical school. So let's get to tip number two, 
flashcards. So this is personally my favorite way to study in medical school because this is the technique that I use to study less than five hours every single day. If you're interested in my step-by-step -step approach, links in the description to that blog post. I like to use a software that most medical students know about and it's called Anki. Anki is a tool that helps you make flashcards but it also tests you using space repetition which is awesome because you'll see the information that you suck at more often than the information that you're really good at. Briefly, I'll talk about my technique. So just like the syllabus method, first I would go through and pre-skim the lecture and look for the big ideas. Once I identified the big ideas, I would use those in the question section of Anki. So going back to our original example, my question could be, what are the risk factors for hypertension? And then for my answer section, you could either type it out, or if you're lazy like me, then you could take a screenshot of either the syllabus paragraph, or even easier, you can take a screenshot of the PowerPoint slides that the lecture may give. Typically for every question, there would be two to three PowerPoint slides that would answer it. So again, if my question was, what are the risk factors for hypertension, the lecturer may use a slide or two to answer that. And so I would take a screenshot and then paste both of them into my answer section. By the end of a lecture, I would have anywhere from 15 to 25 cards, which honestly isn't that much. So all this is done before you even go to class. So now when you're listening to lecture or you're in the lecture hall, you're looking at your flashcards and you're trying to just kind of type in any additional information that the lecture may emphasize and you can add that into your flashcards. Now when it's time to review, go home and just do your flashcards. If you can answer a big idea and remember 90% of the answers that are on the slides, move on. If however you can remember only 25 to 50%, press that button that shows Anki to show it to you again in a minute and just go through your whole deck. For me, it would take me about maybe 40 minutes to go through a whole lecture and memorize all the answers and all the evidence. That's a super quick rundown of how I used Anki, but again, links in the description for a more step-by-step -step approach on how I used it to study. So let's get to tip number three, outlines. This is also another technique that most medical students love to use because they love to consolidate a 20 to 30 page syllabus lecture in one to two pages, which is great. The problem is, however, is when you have to review it, you're just trying to remember a bunch of text. That's kind of like rereading the syllabus anyways. That's a passive form of study. So how do you make your outlines active? When I'm making my outlines, I like to make the headings, the big ideas, and then add in the evidence below it. Once the outline's done, I come home and I'm ready to review. I look over the outline once or twice just to make sure that I understand the information. So then I like to use a technique that I've been using since college. I personally like to call it a brain dump, but you can call it whatever you want. But basically what it is is that you'll grab a piece of paper and you're just going to try to regurgitate your outlines based off of the big ideas without looking at it. Try to replicate your outline. Now you don't have to have good handwriting, no one has to be able to read it, it doesn't even have to have a flow. As long as you understand what you're writing, you're good. The point of this brain dump is when you're answering a big idea, you may remember the first piece of evidence, but you don't remember anything else. So go ahead and start it, that's a big idea you need to focus on, and just keep going through all your big ideas of your outline and see if you can answer them. Once you go through your whole outline, look at the page and try to identify all the stars. These are the gaps in your knowledge. This is what you need to spend time studying on, not the stuff that you already really know. So then refer back to your outline, see if you can fill in those gaps, make sure you understand it, and then grab another blank piece of paper and fill it out again. Ideally, every time you do this technique, you'll have less and less stars, less and less gaps. So I actually have my ob -GYN shelf exam today, so this is actually a good example. Here, instead of typing out my outlines, I just wrote the big ideas that I struggle with. So for example, I was really bad at knowing the drainage of the lymphatic system in the pelvis. So I wrote that as a big topic, and then I try to answer it down below. Now I'll basically go through each main idea and try to answer them as quickly as possible. You don't have to read it. Heck, I can't even read it now, but the point is, at the time of doing it, I knew which topics that I struggle with, and that way I could focus more and more time on them. So that's how you can use your outlines as an active form of learning from the very start. Moving on to technique number four, group study. Personally, I didn't use group studying a lot during my first couple of years. I simply like to study by myself and just get things done. 
but there are plenty of students out there that just like to have company when they study. Med school can be a lonely place. But how do you use group studying as an active form of learning? Now you may say, isn't group studying active? True, but most of the time it can become a social hour, so you have to be careful on who you group study with and how you do it. Create a system with peers that you know are going to stay on schedule, they're going to have their lectures read, then meet with them a few times a week. If I was going to do a group study session, then I would like to do a Q&A kind of system. Your questions for your peers can be the big ideas that we've kind of been talking about. See if they can answer them. Ask them, like, what's the risk factors for hypertension? They may say, I don't know. And you can say, let me show you. You can teach them. Teaching is one of the most effective ways of learning. At the same time, see if you can answer their big questions. Most students are going to focus on the big ideas naturally. So if you can't answer a question from your classmate, that means that you have a gap in your knowledge. Have them help you fill it in, look it up later when you go home, but that's a great way of using group study. So those are my top ways of studying in medical school, and most importantly, they were all active from the very start. Try them out, let me know what you think, comment below if you have another technique that I didn't talk about. Also check out the blog, links in the description for other study techniques that I've been talking about. The blog has over 60 to 70 posts already, so I'm sure that you're going to be able to find something that's useful to you. But hope you enjoyed my first video, please be sure to subscribe below, help me grow this channel as fast as the blog has grown. Speaking of the blog, if you're interested in monthly updates, sign up for our newsletter. I actually send you a free ebook on my top 10 resources for medical school. If you're a first or second year medical student and you want more tips like this, check out my first book, The Preclinical Guide. There I teach you how to study, how to manage your time, basically everything that I wish someone had told me since day one of medical school. Links in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching. Super excited to get on the YouTube train. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and comment below, and definitely subscribe. See you in the next video. Take care, my friends.